Get to know Marco Martinez, a U.S. Army veteran, singer, and actor with an amazing list of TV and film credits. All right, well, Marco Martinez, welcome to the Shangria Show. How are you today? <laughs> I am doing well, thank you. Yes, you are. <laughs> You're an actor, singer, and veteran. Tell me more about you. Where in the world did you grow up? <laughs> uh, okay, so my family is originally from Cuba. They migrated, actually my parents are dissidents, so they were kicked out of Cuba. And my, my dad worked for the previous government. Um, and so um, they went, they, they skipped over Miami and went to New York, uh, you know, like a lot of Cubans. Um, and then, you know, um, I'm actually, my brother and sister, they're actually nine years and six years older than me. My mom went to Cuba again to take care of her family. And then she found out she was pregnant with me when she was there. She was taking care of her mom who was sick, um, and and she was there for a while, um, and then she decided they decided that if I, you know she doesn't leave, I wouldn't be able to come here, and so she went back to New York. I was born there, and then she took me. She went back to Cuba, so I was there for about a year of my life, and then in Los Angeles. It's it's uh, you know they got tired of the cold because you know for tropical so. Oh, I understand. I'm originally from Chicago, so I Oh, yeah, oh yeah, yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> the mm -hmm. uh, that's awesome. What I, what I love most about that is how she exposed you to, to different cultures here in America and over in Cuba. So I love that you grew up with both cultures. Yes, uh, definitely uh, exposed to that. And you know, most cultures, um, you know, have like a little bubble where there's just people, friends, family from that culture, and that's how they're kind of raised. So there was a lot of that uh, growing up as well, whether we were in New York or even when we came out here, a bunch of people came out here with us. So. Awesome. Um, you tell me where you grew up, but how has that shaped who you are today? Um, you know, I think, so for me, the, the, the experience uh, being Black in America, was was different right because um initially it was you know i didn't learn to speak english until i was about five right a little later than most kids and and the kids that i grew up with we all spoke some version of spanglish like a little bit of english not really so it was it was interesting to see how different cultures you know treated you right accepted you whether you're accepted or not i think i think being able to grow up um in new york where there's like a whole lot of diversity there um you know for a little bit helped i think coming out to la was a culture shock for me but it also like the, the people that were around me whether they were african-american or you know like you know whatever i kind of I kind of always never really felt out here like I had a, a group so I kind of just blended to whatever you know that group was doing so I, I got different perspectives you know uh, obviously until I got in high school and it was like let me black so <laughs> so it was like I, was like, I know that <laughs> no, you, right like I always knew that but people would always be like wait you can't be black and speak Spanish right and I'm like well, why not there's a whole there's a whole bunch of people like me so I think it's, 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 you know, growing up that way, trying to figure out where I fit in, um, you know, looking at, at being appreciative of the fact that I have family somewhere else. And as, you know, I know things are tough out here, but looking at them over there, I'm like, yeah, I'm glad my parents came out here. So I always had that little bit of appreciation and then studying history and looking at what you know, the, the sacrifices of, of black Americans and, and you know, Jewish people that joined them and, and you know, and, and looking at that, I was like, okay, so all these people did all these things so that my parents could get out there and live. So it just, it, it just, I never had a problem being like, and, and a lot of times I, I went to school in the Valley, so I was usually the only black person, but I, I was, I was kind of used to it, you know, like being the only me, right? And I think I think that kind of shaped me in a way that that you know you can throw me in a setting and I'll be like okay no fine you know I don't have I don't have a warming up period I, I just go by personality like if you're you seem like a genuine person then 
we can have a conversation and we can just be in it. So I think I think it kind of gave me that diversity aspect of it. Um, yeah, growing up, but I think it's also like, you know, and then I lived abroad for a few years, and when I lived in Europe, that was that kind of was like my mecca, like you know, like in Michael Max, that was kind of like, wait a minute, there's there's more to the world than just the cities that I lived in and just the people that I know. Like there's all these people with different experiences and different points of view, and yeah, so that was interesting for me, yeah. And then look where you are today, you know, from your upbringing to where you are living in California. Yeah. Your TV film career is is amazingly growing. And look at you. So let's talk about these this incredible list of credits, um, including Hente Fide on Netflix, NCIF LA, Criminal Minds, Beyond Borders, House MD, and Castle. Um, what or who inspired your interest in the performing arts? Uh, so my so my mom's so here's the story. My mom's cousin uh, is the mother of Irene Cara. She was on Fame. She sang, sang the flash dance theme. And I, I my mom would always make me see um, home videos of Irene as a kid. Um, but then I always looked at you know again that that proud Cuban culture. Like we need to find black Cubans, you know, like you. And Sammy Davis happens to be black Cuban or have, or was. Or have. Like Cuban. So Sammy was a big inspiration to me and and my parents were like, okay, if, if you're interested in the arts, then you're gonna have to learn to dance, sing, you're gonna have to write, you're gonna have to do like Sammy or do like well, what I What age mean. were you at? What age were you at this time when you're telling well, I was five. I was like four, I was like yeah, I was a kid, I was like four and a half, five. Um I, I was young. I started young, I got cast in a bilingual pitch though, actually. Um, I was that, and, and, and you know, we have these, I don't know if you ever seen African drums, the Cubans play, like the Cuban music, uh, tamboleros. So we had a, a, a song, and I was singing these Odisha. I was singing a song to Yemai, uh, Odisha, and, and the producer of the kid show in LA, he yes, saw me, and he flew me and my mom out, and, and that's how that started, you know, me being on television. But, um, but yeah, no, my parents were like, I think they were trying to discourage me, <laughs> like, because, you know, you're a kid, you say, oh, I want to act, and they're like, oh, okay, well, then you have to learn to dance, you have to learn to write, you have to learn to sing, and they thought I was going to be like, oh, that's too much, but I was like, okay, let's do it, <laughs> so. They're like, uh-oh, <laughs> uh-oh. <laughs> so I think, yeah, Sammy, you so, I you were so young, and you knew what, like, you knew what you wanted, you had those inspirations, and you were, like, already dedicated at such a young age. I think that's incredible. <laughs> I think, yeah, I did. I used to have my, my sister, I used to write these plays for my family. Um, and then have my sister, you know, I, I'd write the stage directions, I'd have her rehearse with me, and then we would do these plays, and then we'd add puppets, like we'd cut them. It was a whole production. We had curtains and the whole thing. And, and that was just my thing. That was just how I, I used my creativity at that young age, you know, so. So yeah, um, for them, but yeah. <laughs> now present day, you know, what's your favorite style of acting? Comedic, dramatic? Uh, I just had this conversation with my coach about it. So, you know, I get cast for a lot of um, one hour dramatic roles. Um, but, you know, I was in an improv group. I was in, I did some little bit of stand up. I've written for, for people, friends of mine that are stand up. And, and I've done some comedy, you know, and people go, oh, you're, you're a funny, funny actor. You should do more comedy. You should. And so, you know, I, I, I always wanted, you know, like, as you get older, you start looking, I start looking at myself, like, I want to do some stuff. You know what I mean? Like, I want to be, you know, you're out of order. You know, you do the band. But <laughs> I think, I think. Honestly, and I know this is gonna sound like one of those answers that you get, but I, I think for me, it's as long as it, I can find, there's there's funny in almost everything, right? Like nobody is 24 hour funny because then they're like obnoxious. But if I could, if, if I could find a, a character that's like really interesting and has all these ups and downs and a good story to tell, and there's some comedy in there, that would be great. Now, does that mean, could it be a sitcom? Probably. I just wrote a sitcom that's being um, about my family that's being shopped around, and it's, it's not a drama. It's not what I do. So, um, 
Yeah, I don't have a favorite. I, I a style preference. Honestly, I, I love comedy. Um, it's, it's, you know, there's a lot of technicalities to it. I love drama, obviously, you know, I study theater and Shakespeare and you want to, you know, but, but yeah, I, I know it's a cop out, but I really don't have a favorite. <laughs> I really don't. I really don't. <laughs> now, you, I learned that you served in the U.S. Army overseas in Germany and London yes. as an intelligence analyst. What were your responsibilities at that part, in that part of your life? Um, so, when I first came in the military, um, I, I was a logistics specialist, right? And then when I got to my unit, um, I was doing the work of officers. We didn't have officers there. And my battalion commander looked at my ASVAB scores and military entrance scores because um, I was actually going to use DLA at the time. I was not trying to be in the Army at all. I just took my friend there. I was waiting. They said, take the test. I took the test. One thing led to another. I was in the Army. Um, he that was looked and recruiter, goes, huh? <laughs> yeah, my, my buddy was my recruiter, actually. Um, I, I So they... They, my battalion commander looked and said, well, wait a minute, you speak Spanish, that's your first language. You scored really high, really high proficiency. And I just happened to be in, in the military intelligence unit. So he goes, you know, I'm going to cross train you. How would you like to be an intelligence analyst? And we talked about what that would entail, a uh, little more freedoms, a little more responsibility. So a lot of uh, reading, a lot of, um, at the time that I was there, um, I guess I could say that now, see classified. My job would be to impersonate a Cuban military official, officer. Uh, we were in Germany and we weren't far from the East German border and there were Cuban military personnel in Moscow and things of that nature. So to impersonate a Cuban uh, military official and try to gain intelligence uh, to serve back to the Fifth Corps, which is what I served, was a mission that I was trained for. What does that mean? Um, Sounds like a movie that you yeah for. <laughs> yeah it does but a lot of it um, obviously that never happened so a lot of it was intelligence gathering and we spent full time in Panama gathering intelligence and so we were in Ethiopia and it was with a team and we were just gathering intel and feeding feeding it back to our superiors and uh, it was it was a good experience I, I tell you you know just again meeting. A, people from different backgrounds who I never would have met, you know, before. Um, and, and a lot of those people, you know, you know, I haven't heard from them in a long time, so I hope it will. But yeah, that was, that was my job, just gathering um, data and, and intel and feeding it back to my school. So you say you were already in school when you went into the military, you served your time, you got out, and then is this when you went to Rose Bluford College of Theater and Performance? Oh, no, no, no. So, yeah. So, that was in Sydney, London. Um, so, I was, I was, I was in a, I was able to, to join a theater group in, in Germany. Um, and, and I was in there for about a year and a half. And then when I got ready to leave, um, someone said, hey, there's a school in London that's really good. I mean, you might want to take, do workshops there and, and study a little there. And, you know, I'm, I'm like, I don't have any money to go to London. So um, my battalion commander um, talked to me about extending and I was like, eh, you know, I kind of want to go to college and I want to, you know, finish my time. Um, I'm interested in this school though. I'm trying to see how I can get to London. And, and we had a satellite um, office there. And he goes, I tell you what, if you get my wife into your theater, this is a true story. If you get my wife into your theater group because she's bugging me about acting, she loves it. I don't know anything about it. He goes, I'll get you assigned to to our unit in London and and you can be there. And I stayed there about six months. And you can you can be there, you know, half a year. You have a, a job, you can work it around your school schedule and you can deal. <laughs> Easy. I was like, okay. <laughs> yeah, I, I I'm telling you, this has not happened in the military. So for all the military folks out there, like, how come he got to do it? I don't know. I was lucky, God, I was fortunate. Um, people have been nice to me um, and I've been fortunate. And, and yeah, so I got to do it and I got to study with, with people and study the, you know, the authentic 
from 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 Russian theater to to Shakespeare to you know, I had a, an actor named Roddy McDowell who, who taught a workshop who I was a big fan of, and I was like, wow, that's he's like knighted, you know. So um, yeah, then I I thought, okay, when I come back to the states, oh, I'm gonna kill him now because you know Shakespeare, and now nah, that wasn't the case. <laughs> but but yeah, no. It was a, it's a great experience. Did, did, did your time in the military prepare you in any way for your life now as an actor? Yes. Um, patience. Um, you know, um, being patient and and just being focused on your objective. I think that's one of the things that the Army gave me because um, I, I did not have a lot of patience. I still struggle with it now. And, you know, this this business is one where you know some other businesses you apply for something they let you know oh thank you you were great but we we moved on this business we just we never hear if we don't hear we know we didn't get it and sometimes it's not about you know we didn't like you it's about oh the funding didn't go through or hey you know i don't know the the actor playing us next to you is like a foot shorter and the lighting's gonna be off, so we gotta, it, it's a whole bunch of things, right? And I think being able to throw all that out and just stay focused on, okay, I'm just gonna train, 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 wait for my opportunity, no, nothing yet? Okay, keep training, 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 training. And that discipline, I think I got from the Army. And I and I have a buddy who is in, who I've worked with on TV shows, his name's Mark Valley, he's an incredible actor, he's been in everything. Um, and I was just with him about a few weeks ago, and we were both in Germany at the same time, but we didn't know each other. But then years later, we ended up, I'm on his show, because he was, you know, he was the lead on the show, and, and, and we were talking about that same thing, how the Army prepared us to stay steadfast, so, yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> then I read that you worked as a dialect coach with Forrest Whitaker on the film Catch 44. What was that experience like? Yes, um, incredible. Um, I went to, we have a mutual friend um, who invited me to a dinner party and he goes, oh, I, I want to see you. He married, he married this Victoria's Secret model. And he was like, I want you to meet her. So I'm like, all right. So I go over there and it's a small dinner party and I kid you, it's me. It's like some executive from Summit Entertainment who goes, oh, Marco, I don't know how you knew me. It's, it's um, Michelle Monaghan, Forrest Whitaker and his wife, and Zoe Saldana, and we're in, and that's it. We're at a table, and I'm sitting there like looking around like, why me? Um, and so we had, Forrest is, he's like a spiritual guy. He's really kind, but it's like when you're talking to him, it doesn't feel like you're talking to a person. It feels like you're talking to like some yogi, like something different, I don't know. So we, we talked and he talked about, uh, he, knew I, he found out I was Cuban and he was talking about that. Like, oh, that's great, I wanna go. Uh, so nothing happened and you know, we left the buys. Two weeks later, I get a call from his assistant saying, yeah, Forrest would like to speak to you. And he got on the phone and he goes, look, I'm playing this role in this movie. It's filming in, in New Orleans and I, and I play this guy, Ronnie, who has multiple personalities. One of them is this Cuban guy. And, you know, I need to get the accent, the language, the mannerisms of the whole nine. And so we would work over the phone on video, things like that in person. And what he said was, I, I, I'm going to have to, I like how you do it. I'm going to have to emulate you. So can you just, can I tape you? And so he, <laughs> so I taped myself or he taped me. Um, and I had another buddy, Oscar Torre, who was an actor too. And he, he helped me out. And we did these clips, and I would take myself reading. His line? Well, I'm not gonna, let's just say I would take myself, and he emulated mannerisms. Um, you know, he did. Give his away thing. Part of the movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he, he did his thing. Okay. But, but that's how, he was, it was easier for him to do that than to sit there and try to learn. You know, he didn't have a lot of time to film. Um, so there's a tape of me somewhere doing stuff that he has, and, and, and he did the film, and I saw it, and I thought, I, you know, he's he's brilliant. I mean, I'm not even gonna try to take any credit for that. I'm just happy <laughs> I could help. I'm just happy I got, I you know, he asked me, and then I was able to help. Well, it's a cool experience, it sounds like. It also sounds like you just never know where opportunity will come from. You know, sure. you, you know and that's why you have to 
seize all opportunities. You know, when they come, just take advantage of them because you just never know. You, you didn't know you would be at a dinner party with them, nor did you know it would turn into you becoming a personal dialect coach for Freud. Right. So. Not, not at all. <laughs> what, a, what a story, I tell you that. Well, yeah. I'm excited about everything that you've accomplished, all you did. Thank you. Um, and also that, you know, you continue to stay grounded, that you had an amazing upbringing. Um, and that Thank you. can inspire people all over the world. Um, how can we stay in contact with you and follow your journey? Um, I'm 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 pretty active on Instagram. Um, so it's uh, Marco Martinez actor. You know, I've got hashtags everywhere. Um, sometimes I'm on Facebook, but more more on Instagram. And um, I, you know, we we Hentify got picked up. So hopefully, you know, we. Uh, uh, we go back I, I you know um, when we can film I'm not sure how it's working out so but uh, mostly on in Instagram is probably the way right now I don't have a website up but um, you know I, I, I do thank you though um, for doing this and for having me here uh, of course. It's been great. thank you for being yeah. on the show do your show today you take care during this quarantine you too. I inspire thank you be safe. Today. keep creating wear a mask be safe <laughs> bye <laughs> bye bye thank you so much